Okay, hold on. Let's go full lock. <laughs> Whoa! So it does just go full steering. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Wow, that and was, that was really just that was just tires sliding. Yeah, that sideways. was just a little bit of a scrub situation. Really, quite fascinating, actually. That's, that's and that incredible. happened fast. That felt faster than it could do in a parking lot. That was very fast. Braking test, 70 miles an hour. Ready? Okay. 68, 69, 70. Whoa. Damn. When the thing grabbed, <laughs> yeah. it just that anchors That's pretty up. good. That's pretty good. Uh, I did that last night in the rain, and we just like felt like we accelerated. <laughs> <It's going. Yeah. laughs> Let's just huck it to the right. <laughs> I'm matted the whole time. Yeah, yeah. You can feel it actually does want to rotate, but it is totally being stopped by the ESP. This video is brought to you by ChemPower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solution for everyone and everywhere. And this video is also brought to you by Star Charge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world. They are also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage with microgrid solutions. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video and welcome to another episode with the Tesla Cybertruck. If you've missed it, we've put up an almost two hour long full tour of the Tesla Cybertruck without any driving impressions because at that point I had not driven it. And in this video, I'm going to be driving it for the first time. So, of course, we'll be producing a number of Cybertruck videos throughout this series. You can see I have a trailer right over here. We're going to be towing with it all day tomorrow, running it against the Lightning and a Rivian, looking at efficiency. We'll be off-roading it, doing a bunch of things. But what I wanted to do in this video was to give you the on-road driving impressions of it. We're going to be driving it in the city, talking about maneuverability, steer-by-wire, rear steering system, how it is to park it, all of the urban situations. Situations. We're going to take it out on the highway and see how it performs at speed from a noise and comfort perspective. And of course, we're going to find some awesome canyon roads here in the hill country of Texas and send it and see how well it works as a performance truck. And uh, yeah, so much to get into in this video, but it all starts with driving the Cybertruck. So let's do that now. Well guys, the Tesla Cybertruck, the time has come for me to drive it uh, for the first time and there's a lot to get into. Before I drive it for the first time, I want to at least take you on a tour of what we're going to be talking about in this video. Everyone knows out of spec videos are long and in depth. There's a ton of other content creators out there that can give you a shorter, less informative video if you don't want to watch such a long one. But we're here to make sure no questions go unanswered on the Cybertruck and we have so much content to come, hours and hours worth of content with testing of highway efficiency and charging performance and so much to get into. With that out of the way, I also think it's important because we have a lot of new audience watching us with the Cybertruck, a lot of Tesla focused audience. It's important to know that while I am a Tesla owner, I own a Model S Plaid and a Model 3 Performance and I've owned many Teslas over the years and generally really love uh, the products, at least many of them and things that they do. I don't hold any Tesla stock, any automaker stock, and I also am not here to make the Cybertruck look good. Uh, my, my goal with the Cybertruck is to just present it with my opinions, with my friends' opinions, my colleagues' opinions who will be joining me, and then that way you can make up your own assumption about how it drives. So a lot of this video is going to be nerdy talk, chassis engineering, powertrain control, uh, different variables of explaining how the vehicle performs in different setups, lane changes with steer-by-wire, all the questions that we have we're going to get into. So what do we have powering the Cybertruck? We have, this is the dual motor, all wheel drive. It's actually a foundation series truck because we're filming this in the first week of the year 2024. And I'm sure this, people will watch this video into the future, but essentially they're only foundation series Cybertrucks available. And most of them, at least at the time of this recording, are the dual motor all wheel drive. Later in the future, apparently there will be a rear wheel drive version of the Cybertruck for less money. And then there will also be coming in the second half of this year, 2024, a tri-motor crazy cyber beast. And what, what's kind of a wild thing up to this point, most of the early reviews of the truck have been on that tri-motor Cyber Beast, but the ones that they're actually delivering are the dual motor. There are a couple Cyber Beasts out there in customer hands, people that are close to Tesla or employees is my understanding. Uh, but this is a customer truck 
dual motor all-wheel drive. 600 horsepower in this particular one, which you know certainly sounds like a lot old school, but then I think, okay, I actually drive a competitor to this one as my daily driver, a Rivian R1T, and that has 835 horsepower. So the numbers are just getting crazy with these electric trucks and their capabilities from an off-road perspective to an on-road perspective are just going wider and wider. It's really crazy. So we have 600 horsepower in this one. It's a rear permanent magnet motor and uh, front induction motor. Both have physical differential lockers. If you're curious more on the powertrain options and everything, we have a whole podcast on that. It'll be linked in the description so you can really learn about the differences between an induction motor, a permanent magnet motor, what lockers mean, and all of those things. I don't want to bore everyone. I really want to spend most of the time driving in this video. In terms of the battery pack, we have a 123 kilowatt hour battery pack, basically an 800 volt system architecture while driving. Right now, whenever I charge this truck, it goes into a parallel configuration configuration instead of series, which means the pack actually splits in two and you're charging essentially roughly a 400 volt system uh, with higher current and the charging port is right back here, but the truck is locked because Francie has the light, the uh, phone and is standing far away. You got to run in. Come on, come on, run, run, run. And there we go. And you can see this is the charging port. Maximum charging speed that I've seen so far is about 250 ish kilowatts. That's to be expected because I was at a version three supercharger and uh, I, I have tried to plug it into higher power public charging infrastructure with CCS adapters and everything. It doesn't work. You actually have to dismantle the whole side of the truck to make the existing CCS adapter work. But I have found a company called XCharge here in the uh, greater Austin, Texas area. And they have a 1000 volt NAX, there's a slightly different inlet port, uh, capable charger and a plug. And they said we can go by and give it a go. It's an experimental charger, but I want to see if the Cybertruck charges on NAX or not. So just a little update there, we're gonna be trying it out. Um, so that's a little bit on the powertrain. Um, maybe I should mention, I put it, a lot of these videos will have some repeat information, but the, the rear motor being a permanent magnet electric machine, is uh, probably uh, considered the primary axle of this vehicle with the front motor being induction a secondary axle. What I mean by that is when you're cruising down the highway, it's primarily gonna be rear wheel drive. This is the axle that's gonna give you the grunt off the line, the power in an oversteering situation, and really just give you most of the work. The front motor is here for stability, for traction, and also added power, of course, when you go wide open throttle. And the tuning of how these motors compare with each other and, and sound and feel is something we're gonna be getting into in this video. Of course, when I have the opportunity to drive a tri-motor Cyber Beast, we'll be doing another one of these because that one actually has a dual induction system with two independent motors that are non-mechanically linked with, uh, you know, basically electronic torque vectoring, which could be really fascinating to see how Tesla implements that. And then that one has a permanent magnet front motor with a mechanical locker. Okay, enough on that stuff. Suspension, crazy on this particular one. Uh, it goes up and down with huge levels of adjustability. I'll insert some photos of Francie for scale where she was, you know, we put it right now in entry mode. This is the lowest the truck will go. And then we put it all the way to extract, which you have to go into off-road mode and then extract and we'll walk you through all the settings. And the truck came up to about here. I mean, it was just insane. And, and really one of the most insane things about this suspension is just this huge amount of air that the system has in it. I mean, the, the speed of adjustment is so much faster than even my Rivian. And it doesn't seem to run out of air capacity that quickly. Yeah, of course you can run it out of air compa capacity and I've heard the compressor kick on, but it's still just wham, comes up and woo, right down. It's really nice. This one also has rear steer. So there's an electric motor on the rear axle that only provides about three, three and a half degrees of rear steering at the moment, but it will have a software upgrade, I'm told, or at least I've heard up to 10 degrees of rear steering in the future. And that is just gonna be really magical and really cool. Just like I always say with any Tesla, the truck is as it is delivered today. This is what we have to review. We can all speculate on what future software will come down the road. We can imagine they'll do something crazy, make the charging performance better, make the power output better, make the efficiency better, but we don't know those things for sure because they don't exist. And of course, we'll review them as they come out. So I wanna try and keep the speculation to a minimum and just focus on what Tesla is delivering today because at least this is a known quantity. Up front, it gets even wilder from a steering perspective. There is no mechanical connection between the steering rack and the steering wheel. It is a force feedback, basically like video game steering wheel inside the car with 
a bunch of redundant sensors that feed to two electric motors on the front steering rack. Both of those steering, uh, those motors are redundant. They both run, and that's what controls the wheels. And it's not like each wheel can spin different ways. It's a traditional steering rack, so they're they're linked together. But there's a redundant motor in an emergency, and also just to apply some extra power. Because I'm sure, as you can imagine, a 6,600 pound truck where you need to turn left or right really quickly. Well, that's what's going on in here. We're going to be playing a lot with that steer by wire system, uh, and and see if we can get it out of phase or out of confusion and. Uh, basically overdrive the truck and talk about if that's good or bad and actually it's not much of an issue and then compare it to my experiences driving Rivian R1T, Hummer EV, F-150 Lightning, Silverado EV and all of its competition including all of the combustion trucks um, which I've been lucky enough to test uh, very recently. Uh, physical sway bars, no um, no mechanical disconnect on the sway bar, I believe, and also no um, fancy roll stabilization like Rivian has. Rivian doesn't actually have any sway bars in their vehicles. They use a hydraulic situation that can basically have infinite roll stiffness adjustment, which means if you're off-roading, you can droop a wheel really low, and then it can come up and it doesn't affect the other side. Whereas here, you have mechanical linkages, uh, and so you can't adjust it. It does have an adaptive damper, though, so there is different ride comfort settings as well as ride height separated from each other. So that's going to be fascinating to play around with the smoothness, the comfort. And truly, I want you guys to get an impression of what it's like to drive the Cybertruck from this video. We're going to be putting it in as many on-road scenarios as we can. We're going to test the constant radius cornering of that steer-by-wire. We have so much to get into. So let's get into everything to do with driving the Tesla Cybertruck, starting with my very first driving impressions, which happened after we filmed the full tour video last night at about two o'clock in the morning. I don't know what time it was. Um, I slept in, so it's now, uh, you know, I'm, I'm awake and I'm ready to rip, uh, but I drove it for the first time. It's just a little quick clip of about five or 10 minutes of me playing around with it, doing stupid stuff, and just getting a general first impression. I'm gonna play that for you now. I hope it's a great you know, sort of introduction, what you can expect when you drive it for the first time. And then we'll get into evaluating the truck in a city environment. We're here in an urban part of Austin, Texas, where we're gonna take it to a shopping mall, a parking garage, and just park it and see how it feels. Then we're gonna take it on the highway out to hill country, and then we're gonna dial this thing up, turn it up to 12, and send it pretty hard and see how well the brakes perform and how the roll stiffness is and if it lets you get any power on oversteer and how that steer by wire really feels when you load up the entire vehicle in a corner. I uh, can't wait to bring this all to you. My good friend Drew, who owns Martian Wheels, who will also be producing wheels at some point for the Tesla Cybertruck, will be joining me, as well as my colleague Francie from the Out of Spec podcast. So, so much to get into. Let's go drive this thing for the next few hours. <sighs> It's 1.05 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> we just shot a two hour long full tour that hopefully you guys enjoyed before you fell asleep halfway through, if you even made it halfway through. Uh, I wanna drive this thing for the first time. We're gonna, of course, this is just an inserted clip, but I have to, I've been making Francie drive me around all day uh, just because I wanna film a full driving impression and I realized I won't have time until after all the range testing. So I'm gonna film my very first impressions because the title of this video is I drive the Tesla Cybertruck for the first time. I have to drive it for the first time. And that's what's happening right here. Truly my first few uh, minutes driving it. Now the vehicle is activated. No, it's not. So the vehicle's off right now, which means the steering has this very artificial, very video gamey, very, uh, I can hear like, I can hear the ridges in the motor, the motor cogging, if you will, as I put a lot of steering effort in. And what I'm doing with this is not turning the wheels at all. This is the maximum feedback force that the uh, front steering system is providing. Now, as soon as I activate the vehicle, boom, it's on. <laughs> you can hear this truck dry steering, which energizes the motors and rips on that steering rack. And of course that can't be good for it. And of course, as we get later on in this video, I'm gonna walk you through all the steer by wire stuff, but I really wanted to give you my very first impressions of everything here. In terms of setup, I'm just gonna go through these settings very briefly, but I will go through them more in uh, uh, detail. I'm not gonna use comfort or sport. I'm gonna go custom and just say what I think I want. I want normal acceleration, ride and handling. Yeah, well, let's go relaxed, which is gonna be a little bit uh, more comfortable and preferred ride height. Yeah, lower for now, just because we're in a height limited parking garage and we can go out uh, later on. 
apply brakes when regenerative braking is limited. This is more like when the battery is frozen or 100% state of charge, it will blend in friction brakes. I'm really curious if this is a brake by wire, but it feels very hydraulic-y. But it's making some brake by wire noises too. It's unlike any other brake pedal I've felt, but one thing I will say, I'm gonna drive it for the first time, the first inch. You'll notice the pedal, watch, sucks itself in when you come to a brake, which is what other Teslas do. So as I let go, it releases the brake pressure, which indicates it's not fully brake by wire to me. That was also the first time I've driven the uh, Cybertruck. Wow, bottom hinged accelerator pedal, uh, <laughs> super cool. So let's, let's just go, let's go drive this thing. I can't believe I'm driving the Cybertruck for the first time. It's something I've thought about for four years since whenever they announced it. And just this whole steer by wire is just amazing. Just going full lock to full lock, it's so trippy and so cool. And I'm like, it's interesting at low speed, this feels like it's mostly adjusting the rear steer. The front wheels feel like it's kind of at the maximum angle. Mm -hmm. So that's all front wheels. And then, yeah, then the rear wheels come in past 90 degrees almost. But the, definitely the rear wheels are doing something even on tipping. Oh, this is so trippy. Okay, let's start with the normal stuff. I just want to talk about low speed calibration, all the things I look for, and we'll go more in depth in a little bit, but throttle tip in, we're only at 11%, really sharp throttle tip in, which is great, lifting off the accelerator pedal, big regen, even to zero, fantastic one pedal calibration as you would expect from Tesla, brake pedal feels good. Dang, driving the Cybertruck, the seat is so good. The, the comfort of everything, wow, just the way this moves the truck around, it's hilarious. And just being able to go around corners like, what? Oh, my God. This is so cool. It's so cool. I'm also delusional, and it's 1 o'clock in the morning, and we've been filming. But look at this. I can just... Oh, I can get it. I can get it to go a little... I can go faster than it can turn. Oh, look at that. Turn. And then you can see it catch up. But it's still way faster than you could ever crank a wheel. If I was in like an F-150 Lightning, I'd be, Whoa. but you can, you can outrun the system. That's cool. Let's go full driving, full turn. Damn. If you go in one direction, it's almost as fast as you can turn the wheel. Let's try it again. Ready? Mm -hmm. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is gnarly. Okay. I'm driving it like an idiot because I'm trying to test it for the first time, but truly my first few inches in the Cybertruck, we have to go to a supercharger. There's one right over here. Let's just, it's only 72 kilowatts, but let's just go there and then we can jam out to the great sound system. Here I am doing hand over hand. Don't need to. Mm. Just want to drive it normally, see how intuitive it is. If I'm not trying to just mess around with the system horn. Oh, it sounds like it's almost inside the cabin. One pedal driving, feeling great. Feels just like a Tesla. They do drive trains pretty much better than anyone. Rear steer helping a bunch through these corners. Oh, great. Once you get the level set, you can just modulate the steering a little bit. The low speed stuff feels awesome. I thought it was gonna feel twitchy just from riding around with you and, but no, it's exactly what I want the truck to do. It really requires very little thought mm -hmm. around the input to whatever is happening with the output. And um, cool, the sight lines are great. The rear has, has no blind spot help at all, which is kind of a bummer. We're gonna scrape the roof, nope. So the front visibility is awesome. These A-pillar windows, super cool. There's people like, just like following us, taking pictures and everything. <laughs> right now? Yeah, they just turned the other way, but they all had their phones out. One pedal driving is great. You really drive this. It's it, the coolest part about this whole vehicle, I think, is the steer by wire because it's a truck. It's about a little bit maybe bigger than my Rivian, a little smaller than an F 150. It feels like a good size out on the road. Um, here is where the, the steer by wire feels a little bit awkward, but it weights up nicely. There's actually even a tiny bit of feedback coming through the steering wheel. What? So, of course, the electric motors can simulate feedback into the wheel. This is so freaking cool. Uh, we're gonna do, of course, all the more testing. I just wanna hop out on the road really quick. Love the clickiness of the turn signal. Is this the way to the road? I feel like we're deep into 
you know, the mall here. Mm -hmm. right? Neiman Marcus. Yeah, looks like there's a road around out here. Here we are coming up to a stop sign. A guy with a hat <laughs> is standing over here. Security guard. Security guard. Nothing to see here. They could care less about the Cybertruck. <laughs> yeah. There's like some people who like blatantly ignore it because they don't want to buy into the hype. Sure. And then there's some people that just like are losing their mind over this thing. So 10% state of charge. Let's rip it. Full send. Wow, great traction control. Motors sound cool. Amazing performance, even down at 10% state of charge. That's impressive. It just absolutely sent it out here. That was sick. I love how the uh, rear view mirror can be changing position. I have the blind spot indication that pops up based on turn signal. There is feedback coming through the wheel. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. the, the, the bottom hinge pedal I really like. There's a ton of regen. I come off the accelerator pedal, boom, regen. If I hit the brakes, wow, it's a good feeling brake pedal, but it doesn't feel like a brake by wire system. No one's around, full ABS, ready? Yeah, very greasy out here, <laughs> holy smokes. Not much traction, to say the least. Let's go uh, to the left, we can do it from this lane. And uh, one pedal driving, all the way down. Yeah, I did feel ABS kick into the brake pedal there. Felt good, felt heavy to stop. It is a heavy, I mean, 6,600 pounds. Um, there's so much to soak in so much this is gonna be a long video is it like what you thought it would be off the bat it's exactly what i thought it would be like because mm -hmm. i just knew tesla was gonna nail it mm -hmm. on the powertrain stuff i can't wait to take it on twisty road and like have a dry pavement to really you know rip it around or even put it in some of these off-road baja settings and whatever does it feel like tesla yeah it, it honestly, the, the pedal application, it feels like they've tuned it, but there's a lot more regen than other Teslas. It has about the same regen as my Rivian, it feels like. And the steering, once you stop being an, an idiot with it, trying to max it out, it's it's really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really cool. I have uh, you know a lot more confidence than maybe a lot of people will or should, but it's so cool to come around these corners with this because it doesn't feel video gamey. It just uh -huh. feels natural i know i'm missing some corners but i just want to go down this way ride quality is good but it's not as smooth as i was expecting but i also think we are in hmm, dynamics do i go to yeah and i can go to higher ride height and now it should raise up and allow the thing to work a little bit more oh, right, instantly i can already tell as we're raising up a lot of these little bumps just got worked out driving a Cybertruck at 1.15 a.m. in the middle of Austin for the first time. Full send. Uh, it's got wheel spin at 11%. Nice. That's, it's strong down low. Model Y 4680 was the same way, actually. Made good power all the way down. And, um, careful. yeah, careful. We won't crash into these. Don't worry, Francie. Thank oh, you. Great. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, this is cool. The sight lines in the truck are cool. It feels pretty wide. It almost feels longer than the other vehicles because it just has this insanely sloped front hood. But there's no weird reflections at night like Model X had when it first launched. There's no distortion that I'm noticing. The wiper, super cool. Mm -hmm. You can see under first wipe, it holds the water down there. Mm -hmm. And then it will come up to a vertical position. It's just trying to have it so that the... Uh, you know, the water doesn't just come up as soon as it pushes it down. I think that's pretty smart. Mm -hmm. Just sending it here through the corner a little bit. It's greasy, but powertrain control feels good. Don't want to crash into the folks with the U-Haul. Moving's already hard yeah, enough as it's it is. fast. And, yeah, brake pedal feels good. Here comes the wiper back up to the center position. Nice. Yeah, again, I'm just being a little bit of an idiot with it just to kind of feel it out, but... It's cool. Let's see what happens when we have to do a U-turn with it in the middle of a road. No one's around. So, ooh. see, here's where the extra degrees of rear steering will help. And then reverse. And then forwards. How sick is that? Awesome. <laughs> just, whoop, whoop, whoop. So, the dash is so deep. Do you notice it? Yeah, it's weird. It's interesting. I shouldn't say weird. To me, this is... It goes so deep. This truck doesn't drive like a truck. People are gonna be going so fast and doing so many stupid things in these things. So what do you instantly. mean it doesn't drive like a truck? It drives like nothing else I've ever driven. It's so unique because 
I have to remind myself that I can tow, what is it, 11,000 pounds? Right. That I'm riding in this great level of comfort that's got this good of a sound system, it's got this much tech, this much equipment, this much powertrain, um, you know, advancement. It's so capable, but then it's just like, wham, instantly move anywhere on the road. It just feels so agile. And I have it in the most relaxed settings. Mm -hmm. It's insane. My first impression is the thing that blows me away is how normal it feels. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying earlier when you drove the truck, that you didn't even realize it was steer by wire, that it was just like, oh, it's just doing what you're asking to do. Mm -hmm. It's, um, it shows how good the Tesla engineers are truly. And right. I, I mean, I, that's coming from someone who's driven pretty much every electric car on sale. Mm -hmm. uh, this is really cool. Light, maneuverable. I'm not gonna say it's like better than anything because I haven't, I have to compare things and it's one in the morning, but I will say I've never had an experience like this one because I can only, I can only appreciate the craziness when I think about what the heck I'm driving. But if I'm just like driving down the road, thinking about work or, you know, like, oh man, YouTube upload speeds. How do we get faster Wi-Fi at home? I don't know, whatever I'm normally thinking about. Uh, we gotta go to the right here. I'm just gonna be driving this thing. I'm not gonna be thinking about how big it is or how yeah. weird it looks or how awkward it is. And I noticed that today riding around in it too, that it just feels so normal mm -hmm. once you get over it. Because in here, it's just a car. It's got steering wheel, it's got yeah. pedals. And I am noticing some vibration. We'll talk about that later in the video, especially at speed. I don't know if that's a this particular truck thing. I felt it as a passenger earlier as well. And then the only reminder that you have that you're driving a giant stainless steel triangle with off-road tires down the road, you have the reactions from everyone. Because <laughs> in here, you're just like, oh, yeah, just, just driving. Yeah. Driving a trip. And you've got great power at 9%. Holy smokes. Big regen. Brake pedal feels really good. Not that you really ever have to use it. So let's go to the supercharger and uh, zap it up because I got a lot of testing to do. But um, there we go. My first impressions driving the Tesla Cybertruck here in Austin at 1.15 in the morning. Uh, this is really, really cool. Just whoop, steer by wire. I'm just driving it normally now just to see what it's like. And it's like... Yeah, just go here, just go there, point and shoot. It has this extremely agile character for a truck that trucks typically don't have. People, oh, we should have gone to the left there, crap, oh well. More driving around parking lots. People will not want to get into another truck after experiencing this, if they like agile experiences, which I think anyone likes to get from here to there quickly, easily, and effortlessly. And I just want to try a couple little skids here really quick, ready? Oh, it's soft when you really lean the thing over. <laughs> <laughs> I just put in a lot of steering in it. The steering is so quick that the rest of the Cybertruck doesn't have time to catch up. So the wheels turn and then the weight comes over. So it's actually maybe from a performance setting a little bit awkward because I always try and lean the car over and then dig into steering. So I might have to recalibrate driving this on a Canyon road. I don't know yet, but even in the parking lot, yeah, it's, it's weird. And I think the passenger, you're, if you're a passenger, you're going to feel the driver trying to get used to all this stuff. Like, are you car sick yet? Not bad. No. Okay. Uh, good. Um, yeah, but I think it's going to be awkward for like the first few minutes and then you're just going to be like, oh, yeah. it's just, a, just a Tesla just drives and you don't think about it. And it just does exactly what you want it to do and rear steers tuned well. The tuning, that's the part that I just can't get over. The drivetrain control, the the powertrain. You know, that that's the biggest part, but also the steering is so cool. Everyone giving the Cybertruck thumbs up. People freaking love this thing. <laughs> you feel like a celebrity. Online, everyone hates it. And then in person, everyone loves it. That's what I've learned. Would you agree? Uh yeah, I think yeah, it, it draws attention from people who, yeah, like we said, have no idea what it is, but want to walk up and learn about it. I No one has walked up and been like, this thing is stupid. What are you doing with it? I've even tried to prompt it. I'm like, it's not my truck. I think it's ugly, even though I don't. I mean, I don't think it's pretty. Yeah. But they're like, no, it's really cool. I think yeah. online stuff can foster a bit of negativity, but in real life, I think it's way easier to be positive and curious about something. Maki. Totally. Oh, yeah, a mache. All right, well, let's go to tomorrow when I'm able to film the full video. But this is my first time literally driving the Cybertruck. And we always do these first impression videos. And 
now I'm not letting anyone else drive this thing. This is so cool. Yeah, who would have thought I'd be chauffeuring you around in a cyber truck yeah, before you day. took the wheel? Thank you, appreciate that. How do we get to the supercharger? Um, so many parking garages, and it's so nimble. Just I like the lag time. You can kind of see if you can get ahead of it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go find the supercharger. Guys, I just want to make it pretty clear that we're not going to be getting any efficiency uh, metrics from this drive that are standardized or uh, we can just sort of interpret what we get. But we will be doing, of course, standardized efficiency testing at different speeds with trailers and of course a full range test at 70 miles an hour and our 10 percent challenge so all of the efficiency numbers will be coming i know it's a hot topic and i promise i will make sure we get all the nerd data for you guys but i have to say we went out for a 27 mile drive just anecdotally and we were ripping on this thing pretty hard and we only got uh, uh 448 watt hour per mile which is really good efficiency considering a rivian if i baby it on the all-terrains anecdotally would do um, a, a little bit worse than that. Maybe another 150 watt hour per mile, something like that. So it seems like maybe this will be a fairly efficient truck, but there's still tons more testing to do. Uh, before we drive it in this video, I just wanna run through the controls of the system. And this is gonna take a little minute, but just bear with me because of course, this is a software controlled vehicle and the software that you select has a huge change on the driving performance. You can't just drive a Cybertruck and say it drives nice. You have to know what mode you're in, how it's set up and all of these things. So the first thing I get when I click the car button in the bottom left hand corner brings us to the control screen and I showed you this in the full tour but we have our main suspension heights right here we're actually missing two more heights above high there's high highest and then full send extract mode that goes all the way up and there's actually some warnings when you go into extract mode that like the air suspension system may run out of air and may take a minute to go all the way up and i'll show you how to access a lot of those and of course we're going to be going into an off-roading portion on the truck um, the main screen that we're going to be working in today is the dynamics uh, screen and so we have different drive modes that run from comfort sport custom and off-road and Comfort mode is really interesting because it locks you in chill acceleration, which to me is a little bit lame because I never want a Tesla to be slow. These things are meant to be quick. I'd never use chill in my car, and but you can do that. The ride and handling is in relaxed and the preferred ride height is in higher. So we know that this is the setup to make the most comfortable, most chill ride experience. Then there's a sport mode that puts the acceleration to standard. This one not being a cyber beast doesn't have beast mode or whatever they call the fast one. Then there's, of course, focused for ride and handling, and it drops the truck down a little bit. So this is more suspension height. This is probably a little bit, perhaps, steering and damper control, and then your power uh, output. Then there's a custom mode where you can set what you want. And I imagine most Cybertruck owners are actually probably going to use the custom setting because we find that it's... Uh, well, we'll find out today, but I, I imagine in my first driving clip, I drove it in that higher suspension and it felt totally fine. There's really no reason to have it lowered down. It does look, I think, actually good, both in high and low suspension. I'm not sure what I like more. It's kind of a, a cool truck, no matter the suspension height. Whereas when you slam a Rivian, they just look silly. This thing actually looks kind of beefy when you slam it. I kind of like it. So um, for the most part of our driving today, I'm going to be using the standard acceleration, the ride and handling, at least in the city, in relax. We don't need any focused, hardcore, stiff dampers or anything like that. Uh, we will put it in focused when we hit the canyons later on. And the preferred ride height in higher. That just leaves a little bit more uh, room in that air spring to absorb bumps. And um, it's going to be really set for that maximum comfort. Of course, if you, if you go up on the suspension, you have more pressure in your air spring, which means less ride comfort. And if you go lower, you have less pressure, which means the spring can move more, which you would think would be more comfortable, but then your range of motion has decreased, which means you might actually run into a bump stop or a progressive rate a little bit quicker. There's also uh, some other settings for driving. This is a, every Tesla has this one now after some recent software updates. Applying brakes when regenerative braking is limited. When you're at very high states of charge or when the battery pack is very cold um, or if inverters get hot, there's a lot of reasons why the truck may not want to onboard energy with the electric motors. In years past, when you would lift off the accelerator pedal, the vehicle would just coast. And personally, as an EV nerd, I like that because I like to know if there's a powertrain limitation somewhere. And I, of course, can apply the brakes to slow down more. But many EV drivers are not. 
uh, comfortable, they want a consistent experience, and this will actually artificially blend in friction brakes, so you always have that same level of deceleration when you lift off the accelerator pedal, no matter your drive mode or condition. There's a really cool feature, I have this in my Model S auto shift out of park. You get in the car, buckle, buckle your seatbelt, hit the brake pedal, and just go. You don't need to select your direction. And truly, this works like 9 out of 10 times. The problem is on that 10th time, you're expecting it to work, and then you're going forwards into your garage door, so or whatever it might be. So you just always have to look as to what direction the truck is going in, and uh, I'm sure it's the same exact logic that I have in my uh, Model S or others have in Highland Model 3, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then there's also a auto lower function, which is when you put the vehicle in park, it'll drop to easy entry. Uh, Rivian has this function, other vehicles have this function, Land Rovers have had it forever, and famously those have failed air suspension systems. I'm actually dealing with mine on my old Range Rover at the moment, doing a coil swap on it. Anyway, um, I if I owned the truck for longevity, I probably wouldn't use that. Now, of course, the Tesla engineers will say it probably only puts 3% stress on the system and it's no problem, but in my head, that's just more cycles of the truck going up and down. And seriously, feel free to do that however you want. The truck's under warranty, who cares? And uh, at least with uh, Francie in the car, she likes it in auto lower, so she can hop <laughs> in and out of it a little bit easier. Uh, we're not going to get into towing and hauling in this video. We certainly will. The driver assistance systems, the Cybertruck at the time of this recording, has no autopilot functionality at all. It only has adaptive cruise control, uh, but no lane keeping uh, at all, so, um, which is kind of crazy to me that, like, people paid for FSD beta included with CyberBeast and all these things and these functions, and it just is not in the truck. Uh, and, you know, of course, Tesla claims it'll come, and I'm sure this is one of those features I have no doubt will make it to the Cybertruck. Tesla's great with driver assistance, but it just feels a little bit like you paid for something, you should get the thing you paid for. And uh, of course, full self-driving beta is not full self-driving. We've done plenty of videos on that, but it is fascinating technology to watch cut the car, figure out different uh, situations. Me personally, I actually just like base autopilot. I just wanted to stay in the lane on the highway. Maybe the enhanced function of auto lane changes is nice when I select it when to go. Um, but I'm also a nerd that doesn't like people to look at me like I'm an idiot driving down the road not knowing what I'm doing. Uh, other settings from driver assistance, we're going to keep everything in, in how I normally do. Everything in early collision warning because it's fun to know when the vehicle thinks it's about to crash and all of those things. So really like it. And uh, I think that covers it. There's a couple a uh, couple last thing in dynamics that I want to show you, which is the off-road setting. And we're going to do a whole video digging into the off-road setting. It's a bit like track mode, but here in off-road. And you actually get a bunch more information here for the vehicle. You get ride height at each corner. So you can see if the truck is, you know, sort of squatted on one side or not. You get your motor temperatures battery temperatures, and you can, of course, turn this on and off. Why would you not want it on? Great data. We love data, and I love that Tesla provides the temperatures of everything uh, right there. So let's go drive it. We're going to put it in the custom drive mode for on-road. We'll drive it around the city, play around with steer-by-wire throughout the whole day, and uh, go nerd out. Drew will take it for a drive as well and share his impressions with you. Just a quick little blast from a much better driver than I am, and uh, let's go have some fun. You nailed it, though. Who makes cars so complicated? Well, and it's really... Do you yeah. have to even view it as complicated? That's the thing I do, but anyone can just get in this car and drive it. Yeah. We should use. We should make that point, actually. That it's just going to be super user-friendly, yeah. I mean, right. This might be the only thing that's really like, oh, that's strange. I've never even... Touched, right. a, touched a screen and I've had shift before I've had a lot of people get in my profile and like hit the brake and then they're in drive and not realize it <laughs> yeah yeah that, that's one you should let people know yeah ahead of time yeah for sure um, so anyway to, to shift in and out of park you have your cyber truck here that you can pull backwards for reverse go up for drive I actually prefer the full screen length of Model S Suspension is adjusting and creaking on the brakes. That's like my biggest pet peeve on the planet. Let's just inch it so we can relieve oh, the stress wow. and yeah. the suspension. Um, having the cameras up is kind of cool. I do like the front washer. That's always really nice. That's great. No rear washer though, is that right? No, re which is like the one you want the washer on. Yeah, that's where the dirt's gonna end up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Living in Colorado, we all know about wiping the rear camera of the Tesla in the winter. Absolutely. So, yeah, all the schmutz gets on there. Uh, so, yeah, normal drive mode. Let's uh, let's go drive this thing. I've uh, 
had the chance to drive it a little bit this morning in preparation for this video shoot and whoop, so cool the steer by wire and what's amazing to me is just how natural it truly becomes my whole plan with steer by wire was i expected to find it awkward and then i was going to shoot another video at the end of the driving impressions um, or at the end of our testing to be like oh and here's what i think of it now but i've just liked it since i got in it yeah it it took me uh maybe a couple hundred yards to uh to get used to and then you're like okay that's just what it is it's very snappy at low speed but uh, yeah it is to it very good at low speed so the one thing we always do with every vehicle is let's talk about the low speed stuff first so you can see i have to put in very little steering and there's pretty good feedback and just to get the vehicle around if i lift off the accelerator pedal i already showed you in the first clip it comes to a stop the one thing that i do want to show is what's the best way to launch the cyber truck which is typically in a vehicle you would go left foot hard on the brake preload the drivetrain and suspension and then pop off the brakes but the problem is nothing happens when you do that it's just you sit there are you sure you want to go and then oh power the best way to do it is just to stab the accelerator pedal which is just <laughs> <laughs> And it is, you know, to keep in mind, there's a tri-motor version. There's room for more power. Don't get us wrong. Oh, yeah. This feels like Model Y long range with boost, maybe? Yeah, yeah. It's like not not crazy anything. This is the minimum amount of power I would want in an electric truck. More, more than you need. Yeah, more than you, for sure. Yep. And all of the electric trucks are more than you need. For sure. I would say. Um, but just being able to cruise around here, have this great throttle modulation. It has a little bit of more of an aggressive tip in than the rest of the Teslas and being bottom hinged, it is a slightly different feel to the driver, but I prefer the bottom hinge. Drew, what do you think? I also prefer it, yeah. Uh, having uh, driven a lot of BMWs back in the day, uh, that just feels feels great, yep. Yeah, and especially if you're, uh, you know, rev match downshifting in your cyber <laughs> sure. truck. Right, yeah. <laughs> Always great to get the heel over. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, cool. No, so uh, let's let's go get it out on the road. Let's go drive it around the city. The uh, the noise performance of the motors, you do hear them at low speed a little bit, just to letting you know that you're powered by electricity. There's a whine. And there's also some interesting warbles coming from that front induction motor, especially as the speed comes up that I'm not so sure what that is, but we'll talk about it as we hit the highway. Yeah, the motor's definitely uh, making more noise uh, in a good way than uh, than most other Teslas, if you're, if you're familiar with uh, the silence of, uh, you know, Model 3, Model, Model S, something like that. Was that creek the car? No, oh, it was this. Oh, okay. Oh. I was moving it because it was spilling. Oh. You launched. The, the, oh, the drink. seat rest, yeah. the center. Okay. That yeah. The strawberry acai was, oh, there we go. was flying <laughs> around. <laughs> so I have a couple things on the steering wheel. I have turn signals, which are really nice, real physical click now. Yeah. You have your massive mono wiper, <laughs> which uh, someone actually corrected me, and I really appreciate it. I had heard that this wiper was a one kilowatt electric motor, which to me makes sense because look at how freaking fast this thing goes when you go yeah. full set. Yeah, that's a lot of power. That thing rips, um, but someone said it's only 100 watts which almost seems low but hmm. i just wanted to throw it out there is it one kilowatt or 100 watts gotta know someone I, this is the biggest question <laughs> um other things on the steering wheel i have a button that i can instantly bring up my camera view with oh not at high speed though you can only toggle your rear view camera on the screen while driving and at low speed this camera button will toggle your full camera view right here which you can of course show the front camera you could direct a movie with this thing yeah. um, this is so cool and of course you have your rear view camera which i think i actually prefer here yeah i think i do too yeah pretty nice especially and, when you have navigation going it can kind of get in your way when you've got it over here yep just want to do a little bit of extra urban driving talk about getting into city uh you know little parking lots and maneuvering around this looks like a kind of a dead end so let's make a u-turn and head back to the mall um the weird thing about low speed is when you turn the steering wheel 
the whole truck shakes just by turning it this much. Sure. Well, you have f all four wheels turning. And turning a lot. It's turning a lot. You're, yeah. <laughs> you're expecting just to have like a couple degrees of lock on and you do this and you're like, I'm going that way. Right, right. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. And so you, you do get this slight bit of cabin judder in the Cybertruck that you would only get if you just like did this with a normal truck. <laughs> right, right. The wheel. Yeah, you'd have to really be working it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you know, one of the things I showed in the early drive, which we tried with Lars earlier, is you can get it out of phase a little bit. <laughs> yep. And you can, you know, it can try and not keep up basically. So, so an out of phase, maybe describing, you know, so you, you go here really quickly, right. <laughs> and and it it's a little behind yes. where, where your steering is when you're going that fast. I don't think anyone in their right mind would ever yank a steering wheel like that <laughs> sure. it requires a lot of force. But I also was thinking how you could never keep up if you had a normal electric truck steering wheel. You couldn't go that fast. Nope, not possible. So yep. it's just as, it's way faster than any way you could ever do it. Yep. I also just came up with an idea. This is an empty parking lot <laughs> nice. where we can test Wade mode. <laughs> um, we're actually going to do a whole off-road thing, but there is a Wade mode function of the Cybertruck that pressurizes the high voltage battery pack with the onboard air compressor mm -hmm. for the suspension. And such a cool feature. It is pretty cool. So let's just kind of come through here. Traction control on. Pretty cool. Into the steering. That's floor. Traction control is holding us <laughs> yeah, very on the brakes. <laughs> Full ABS. <laughs> it's pretty maneuverable. Yeah. You just. Yeah. I mean, the, when you really get on it, though, you feel the uh, you feel the weight. What's the steering going to be for the semi? Uh, that is uh, like a normal steering. I under is my understanding. Just roast the tires. Yeah, you hear a little bit of wheel spin. <laughs> it's so awesome. Um, and you really have to be careful driving like an idiot in this truck because you can't. Like everyone's looking at you. <laughs> so you know, if we hear any sirens, we know they're coming for us. So this thing being so heavy, you've got quite a bit of tire noise happening. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the tires, it's actually something I wanted to put in the intro of this video. They are really not much tread on those tires. Yep, yeah, for an uh, all-terrain tire, yeah, it's super low tread. Yeah, and I think the reason the tread blocks are almost look like they have 30 or 40,000 miles on them is not because we've been driving it hard because yep. we haven't yet. Brand um, they're brand new. They have 700 miles of just normal driving. They they probably wanted to get the most amount of response out of the tire and those tread blocks are really squishy and yeah. also range. I mean, anytime that tire is deforming under pressure, you're losing uh, force to deformation and heat. And so, you know, the yep. Cybertruck's heavy, but it also has to match Tesla's required performance characteristics and range characteristics. Yep. And so the guys at Goodyear probably had a crazy challenge to make all that uh, come together. And yeah, yeah, you were with me when we were at the Goodyear Proving Grounds. Absolutely, that was a great time. And uh, those guys are uh, awesome. Yeah, they're legit. Yeah, so it'd be interesting to get some more little details about the, the development of these tires. Absolutely. And just cruising in an urban environment now, we're at the Domain here in Austin, and so many people like, <laughs> and we really need yeah, to do a just, reaction video. I was going to say, the camera's just watching the, the neck snapping that we're doing around <laughs> Austin is yes. just, uh, you know, uh, I was just texting a friend saying uh, chiropractors are going to do really well around here. <laughs> yes. It's, uh, it's a little bit insane. You can see someone with a Cybertruck did some uh, testing here with the steer by wire. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> um, yeah. And then some people just blatantly don't care. Sure. Right. It's yeah, really you can, funny. You can tell the non car people. Of course. So yeah, inching around the truck in terms of its sizing ability. <laughs> like how she just <laughs> looked at that thing and was like, what the F is that? <laughs> and then got in her car. Right, just completely just blatant, <laughs> you know, just staring, <laughs> happening. Yes. Just, um, but the size of the Cybertruck is wide. Yes. No way around it. This yep. is quite large. And now that we're at low speed, I can pull up the camera view. And um, you know these these lines are unbelievably well tuned. I have to say, Tesla always does a great job of the at least with the reversing lines into a yep. supercharger. Absolutely, I test so many cars for work. I know you've driven so many of them as well. And like backup cameras suck, pretty much. Yeah, like across the board almost. Yeah, like how yep. could you not just put the lines where the tires are, like Tesla does? Well, and, and the uh, the crazy fisheye 
uh, situation going with so many of the cameras like, too. Tycon is like off to the side and looks terrible. Yeah, so Tesla nails that. Yep, absolutely. And uh, so many people just looking, not looking. Francie, we're gonna drive by the Apple store. Can you get a video clip on your phone? Oh, those. <laughs> with all the glass windows. Those are your people. Yeah, we have, to, let us know if you wanna see a reaction video. <laughs> we have five cyber trucks this week. <laughs> we should get at least a couple of them and drive through uh, downtown here. But the powertrain oh, feels great. Yeah, they're already seeing it. That's yeah, yeah. so funny. Get get inside the store. There. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny how, yeah, people are like phones <laughs> yeah. out. How many how many iPhones <laughs> just got whipped out? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the size is wide. It feels on its own a lot bigger than I think it actually is. Because when I start looking at normal pickup trucks, here's Ram 1500s around. It's definitely bigger than a Tacoma, but it can fit in a normal parking space. Uh, the rear steer makes it nice. I can't wait for it to get upgraded to 10 degrees. I think mm -hmm. that's really going to make this thing pivot. Yep. But like we've experienced with 10 degrees in the EQS and Hummer EV is a big degree of rear steer, maybe even 14, I think. The tail swing is crazy. So you, that that is something you need to be aware of. Yeah. If absolutely. you're like parallel parked on a curb, yeah, and then like turn, you're going the rear is going over the curb. Yeah. And so pulling out of superchargers, you're just so used to turning out of a supercharger that I think we're gonna see Cybertruck tail swing into other electric cars. Yep. At it's, charging stations, perhaps. We could, we could measure how much how much well, once we have that full 10 degrees, it's only three now. I'm sure you already said that, but um yeah, that's uh something a lot of people might not be used to. Yeah, there is a way to program a hot key on the steering wheel, at least in the other models. It doesn't seem like it's come to Cybertruck. It'd be great to have just a rear steer off. Rear steer, exactly. And yeah. then just, okay, I'm out of the tight situation, put it back on now. So rear steer isn't always uh, good from folks like us who have driven it quite a bit and it's amazing on the highway where it can elongate the chassis if you will make it mm -hmm. even more comfortable mm -hmm. it's great around right turns like this where I can just you know go out turn the wheel I know that the rear wheel isn't gonna clip the curb and, and so over. yep just really nice in those areas and even the turning radius with three degrees of rear steer just to give you guys a full impression of what it looks like if I were to go full lock but here I am, full lock on the steering wheel. You get there so quickly that mm -hmm. even though the turning radius is great, uh, I, you know, it's certainly not like a smart car or anything, but you get to full lock so much quicker quickly, yeah. that you can like make corners that you would never be able to in a normal sure. truck. Yep, yep. So there's a lot here to enjoy. There's a lot that of technology, especially the steering system that shines at low speed. That's where you really seemingly get the benefit of this steer by wire, the tuning. Uh, this guy's rolling down his window. <laughs> He's a little scrambling for his phone. Everybody lets us go. <laughs> yeah. When you're when you're driving a Cybertruck, everybody seems to love you. It's really fun. So I just want to get a look at it. I, yeah, so uh, that so that quick steering at low speed just makes this so easy to drive. For somebody who's not like a normal, you know, truck driving person, um, it's going to be very user friendly. Yep, absolutely. And the accelerator pedal seems to be an acceleration target rather than power output. Hmm. Because as you set one input, this is how Teslas mm -hmm. normally do, mm -hmm. it will actually increase the power so that you have the same G of acceleration. Mm -hmm. So here's one pedal input and watch. Yep. I'm not moving the pedal. Yep, yep, yep. There is a little bit of a dead zone at like 12 miles an hour, and yeah. my plaid has it too, so I don't know why they tune it in. But uh, once you get at high speed, you set your power application for acceleration, and then you just keep your foot there. Yep. And as more forces act on the Cybertruck as it's accelerating, mm -hmm. it will overcompensate. I think that's enough for in the city. The biggest uh, driving impression of this truck in, in low speed environment is everyone around you. It's <laughs> amazing how much attention this car draws i mean yeah. brand new c8 corvette really cool car not one person looking at it oh that's cyber yesterday's truck. news everyone's like Whoa, <laughs> <what's that thing?" laughs> really fun let's go get it out on the highway and see how it does at speed we are now merging on the highway behind a very cool lexus isf good eye those are rare and awesome let's just go hard corner <laughs> almost made it, kept it in the lane. <laughs> it's heavy, damn. Yeah. You really feel like it's so agile until you like do something and you're like, oh, yeah. it's 6,600 pounds. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Drew, you had some thoughts after we finished recording on, on sort of the visibility, if you wouldn't mind sharing. Really, really good. I think um, 
one of the things that that bugs me in a lot of cars but uh yeah i've noticed even in a model three is the eight pillars are a little bit thick and you can you know especially on the driver's side you know when a car is coming or something like that sometimes you know that eight pillar is just right in your way but i don't feel that in the cyber truck maybe it's the the length of the windshield and just the the sheer size that you have and you're a little bit further away from the A-pillar and also these front windows it works really really good so I think uh, great visibility out the front I totally agree and it's uh, something that I because I think we've been in it for a day we just have gotten so used to it now yeah and uh, it'd be really interesting to go back to like a Model 3 after this mm -hmm. or even my dad's Model X that I've been driving on the trip down here yep. and see what that's all about uh, just merging on the highway, I hit the turn signal, and, and every Tesla has this feature now, with at least with Autopilot 2, but you get this great blind spot camera that pops up on the screen. And you know, the mirrors are good, but this is always just a great double check. Make sure that nothing's down the side of you. Um, you know, a Hyundai, Kia Genesis vehicles have it. Honda had it, I think before anyone, Honda Sensing maybe. Nice ISF, very cool. And now we are out for a cruise on the highway. I'm gonna set the speed at 75 miles an hour. And there's a lot to absorb here. The first and most notable thing is how poorly Texans people drive. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he's not from here. I think it's an <laughs> Illinois place. Yeah, but just the general competency of driving in Austin is so low. It's pretty bad. I've never, I think it's gotta be one of the worst places I've ever driven. It may be because we're in a cyber truck, people drive like crap. Well, that that's definitely a thing. Yeah, people are acting a little bit weird around this thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. uh, but I do like the blind spot monitoring, and I do like how they do have a physical light in the speaker grill, um, just like Highland Model Three does. And we'll show that uh, up here as as a car comes up passing on the left. I'll sit behind this Model X and let a car come up, and you'll see a red light here. Mm -hmm. uh, but but really, the first and most notable thing is uh, vibration. Quite a bit. It's, uh, oh, this this Model X is actually he's, asking us to go for a pass. He's full arm wave yeah, high. Full <laughs> arm wave. <laughs> he's like, like, yeah, he's like, thumbs up. I need to see that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Send it. <laughs> oh, drag race. <laughs> we are not racing through the streets of Austin, Texas to, to anyone from the Department of Transportation watching. We would never, never do that. But the vibration is odd, Drew, and I noticed it since we got the truck, and it's just this sort of gear train, wine noise, so half shaft thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna reserve judgment until we drive another one. Absolutely. Uh, because it seems like it has to be unusual. There's no way they would engineer. Teslas are always pretty smooth when they're dialed in. Like perfectly smooth. And now Model S and X front drive shafts, yeah. <laughs> engine mounts or motor mounts. But um, yeah, it. Uh, let's just uh, hope that this one is uh, a little bit different, or maybe it's not drivetrain. Maybe it's something else. But I could think be tire. I don't know. I can't imagine Goodyear would let a tire go out. It doesn't feel like tire. So what we should do is we should, before we post this video, we're gonna ride in another Cybertruck today. Yep. And we will confirm the vibration for everyone because I feel like most journalists would be like, it vibrates, it sucks, right, Tesla's right, right, awful. Right. All of them are bad, right, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> but we should just verify yeah. all of that. Exactly. Now, so Kyle asked me to make a quick clip about the Cybertruck and some grinding feeling. Uh, we are actually at 72, 73 miles an hour indicated. I am definitely feeling some sort of vibration in the rear seat and in the footwell here coming through the cabin. Um, I'm not exactly sure if this is what Kyle is asking for, but definitely feel and audibly hear a little bit of a grinding and almost, yeah, a little bit of chopping going on here. Very interesting to say the least. Cruising on the highway with Brandon Tesla Flex here in his Turroed Cybertruck. Really interesting stuff going on here. Very rainy night here in Austin. Few things going on. That rear view camera is getting very hard to see out of. Can really only see just a little bit of the car behind us, maybe a little line in there. Also interesting how the water is coming back up on the wiper. A little bit of drizzle, not a ton of rain, but I'd definitely be curious to see in a full downpour what that actually looks like. We are like. on some of the harshest, roughest, nastiest pavement. And considering that, with the size of the tire that we have, it's not that noisy in here. 
there is quite a bit of tire noise um, but when you're on smooth pavement not this Texas course stuff I can imagine this is just a great quiet road tripper and I don't think if I go into audio settings here that there's any active noise cancellation at the moment nope and I feel like if they add that mm. that'll just be another layer because they have that technology from SNX absolutely and that made a huge difference I remember when uh, like your plaid came and it didn't have that yet uh, and then they did the update and then oh wow the car got so much quieter. Yeah, it's really cool Sometimes I catch it and it has to recalibrate and I'm like <laughs> why is the car so noisy and then it recalibrates and I'm like Oh, okay. Nice. I'm no longer upset Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope they add that technology here to the Cybertruck just a request and uh, of course that seems like a low priority thing to add at start of production that's a benefit of a software connected vehicle, but we also have to review the vehicle as it is today, which is a bit noisier than we would like, I would like. But the wind noise, considering we're driving a giant triangle, uh, is really not bad. And actually on par with Rivian, which I think is a fairly quiet cabin, and uh, maybe not as quiet as, F definitely not as quiet as F-150 Lightning. We'll drive them all back to back tomorrow, yep. but Lightning is just dead silent and also a little bit floatier and more comfortable on the highway. Sure. In terms of ride quality, the Cybertruck is, you know, I've heard some describe it like a Rolls Royce. I, I would not go that far. I was just driving, Francie was with me in the Rolls Royce Spectre. Yeah. That is total isolation. Yeah, nothing like this. And, uh, Which is a, you know, uh, a hard car to compare against. Yeah, it's a half a million dollar <laughs> <laughs> But I'm just saying, you know, some people yes. have said it was like that. Sure. And uh, my, my impression is it's not. No. It's no. very comfortable for a truck. I don't think it's as comfortable as a Lightning or a Rivian. I think Tesla, a little bit like BMW back in the day, has a bit of this sporting edge to it. Absolutely. And I really like how they won't compromise driving dynamics in every mode. So there's always a bit of you can get into Cybertruck and still experience some of the fun, even if you set all the settings wrong. Sure. So that's probably what they were going for here because it is more than comfortable enough for a long road trip, but definitely a bit of firmness, these guys taking photos. <laughs> you have to watch out for everyone right. driving the Cybertruck. Uh, no autopilot in this one, Drew. Yeah, so I'm assuming they're working hard to, uh, to bring it uh, to Cybertruck owners as fast as they can. Um, yeah, uh, I, I uh, would be a pretty frustrated uh, as an early early owner uh, yeah, to yeah. not have just at least simple autopilot, just yeah. basic autopilot. But um, hopefully it won't be long. Yep. Because we know that's coming for sure. I oh, mean, I don't yeah. doubt that. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, sure. okay, that's got to happen. Uh, traffic wear cruise control, though, adaptive cruise working great, and you can adjust the distance on the steering wheel, unlike Model S and X, weirdly. Um, but <laughs> right. Model 3 and Y, you can. Yep. Also, yeah, Model 3 Highland, you can do it here as well. So, highway cruising, this is a car you crank up the tunes. You set the Tesla route planner. It'll do all the work for the charging, the, you know, however long you need to charge, stop to stop. And the only thing you have to really keep an eye on, even if you're on autopilot especially, is watching out for other drivers around you because people will like lane creep into you. And Yeah, until this thing is, uh, you know, just ubiquitous and everybody's seen one and it's not such a new crazy thing anymore. Um, yeah, <laughs> you really do have to watch out because nobody's looking where they're going. They're just staring at <laughs> cyber. All right, here's our Model X dude going by again. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, but yeah, it's it's more than comfortable enough. The 35 inch tires have a fairly high top speed, 112 I think miles an hour in this one, and 130 in the Cyber Beast, which seems very high for a 35 inch tire. They also run pretty high pressures, 50 psi cold which probably gets them up to 53 PSI warm, 54, something like that. Mm -hmm. So you got a lot of air in your tire, which means that the suspension has to do most of the absorbing. Uh, and thankfully the chassis is so stiff that the suspension can actually be relaxed a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you do feel that. The stiffness of this vehicle is amazing. Going under yeah. undulations, you hear no creaking, no torsional stress. There's no sign of it. Yeah. You're just driving a, it feels like it's carved of one giant piece of metal. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, especially uh, older pickup trucks, you know, you get a lot of that, that 
you know, shake and twist in the chassis that you can really feel when you're, you know, going over, especially these sort of like, uh, you know, expansion joints and things like that, that just, just feels terrible. I've always just really hated driving trucks, but this feels like a car and like a really nice car. So this is the truck for me. <laughs> yeah, if this was like a, a, a normal crossover, you'd be amazed at how well it handles. Absolutely. Meanwhile, it's a truck that can tow 11,000 pounds. <laughs> right. and, and it's it's a, it's a triangle, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, it's a next level experience, but I will say, um, even driving it last night into today and even now, if you just ignore the fact that you're in a cyber truck and just put on the music and cruise, it feels very normal. Yep. There's nothing weird or annoying other than the vibration in this particular one that would make you feel like you're driving anything exotic or crazy. It's just great seats to settle into. Probably one of the best seats I've ever experienced in a car. It's and yeah, like the, the way that my back sits into it, the heated seats are good. Heated squircle is nice. Yep. Um, and the back seats really, uh, yeah. one of the best, uh, I've sat in really, I can finally, you know, especially electric cars when you have that battery pack underneath you and so you basically need to raise the height of the floor, your feet end up going up and then you start sitting in an unoptimal position where you sort of on your, on your spine. Here you can actually sit normally and quite comfortably and headroom as well. Uh, yeah, really, uh, really like it. Yep, absolutely. And I'll say it's, it's definitely partially due to the pavement that we're on, but it's seemingly the loudest of Rivian Hummer, or Rivian Lightning, and this one. Hummer EV was pretty loud because it had that sort of thin-ish roof, mm -hmm. but it's not as quiet as, I think, Model 3 Highland, uh, or even anything in here, yeah. which I would have expected a bit more considering the vehicle is so well sealed with double-pane glass everywhere, but I think it's a lot of like road noise being transferred up into the vehicle. Yeah, I, I haven't driven Highland. Uh, obviously, I have a lot of experience with all the other current Teslas uh, in the US um, and it's quieter I would say than uh, than our 22 model 3 um, by a very small amount maybe yeah and now we're on some smooth pavement thankfully that happened at the perfect moment yeah a lot of its road noise on that surface sure. yeah that surface is pretty rough yeah. but I feel like maybe it should be insulated it, better just a little bit yeah well, we got uh, we got to go hit the canyon, so we're gonna go hit some twisty roads and set this thing, and then uh, at the end, I want you to take over and share, you know, roughly what you think, if you don't mind. Sounds good. So let's go have some fun. And uh, F-150 Lightning merging on the highway up here. Uh, just yesterday, we came up on this exact route in this vehicle and saw so many electric truck owners all giving us thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is amazing how in person everyone can just love everything. For sure. And then online. Everyone's just so angry about this thing. I don't get it. Yeah, it, it doesn't make sense. Oh. Uh, I, yeah, again, yeah. Everything that I've seen in person has been purely positive and like really enthusiastic, even from sort of non-car people and people who <laughs> we've met who don't even know what it is. They don't, they've never heard of Cybertruck before. Right. So they, let's just do a quick lane really change here. Blown. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so you do have to put in quite a bit of steering for that. Yeah, which is good. I think that, that seemed, a, like a normal amount of steering yep. that you would want to put in at, at you know, that, 60 or so. What I want to do is get an open parking lot and we'll do a whole video on steer by wire trying to confuse it. I think we'll call it trying to confuse steer by wire <laughs> because that's what we're going to do. Great time. And like go really fast and just yep. <laughs> and see if it will actually go full lock or if it will go, here's the maximum we think you can go at this speed. Yes. I uh, wonder if it'll just do full understeer. Yeah. Um, and like uh, like our, our friend Lars was uh, asking about, so if we like start from a stop with a certain steering angle and just accelerate, you know, faster, faster, faster with that same steering angle, does the, do the wheels actually start to point? Yeah. yeah. And I think they would. I agree. Yeah. I, I think if you have a, if you have a set angle, I felt it too a couple times yeah. where I've like punched it mid corner yeah. and nor, and I had to go, Oh, I got to put a you little bit more in to crank it a bit more. That's yeah. where it gets slightly unnatural. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which you would have to do anyway for a normal vehicle because you are going to have some push. The tire's going to, you know, deform a little bit. Sure. But it definitely felt like the ratio was changing on me. Exactly. And I'm like, Oh, I don't know. That, that was, that's the only very odd case that I've felt so far and I'm actually a little bit nervous because I think we might feel that on the Kenyans. Well, 
coming out of a corner. We have to find out. We have to find out, and we're not far away. Let's go. Uh, let's go give this thing a quick rip. Before we do any performance driving, I just wanted to zap it up a little bit. So we've come to the supercharger that I've been to most. Drew will be plugging in. You got to really get close, backing up. There's no park assist on this one, just a backup camera. But that's not too bad. No. Okay. Oh, Everyone, I, thought it, I thought it was worse. That's not bad at all. Yeah. I've seen like videos of these things stretched all the way out and they're removing bollards at charging stations for them. But yeah, not bad at all. And we are uh, juicing 39%. This is the highest I've had it plugged into a charger. Let's see what it'll peak at here. I should put it into uh, service mode, but I'll of course have a full charging review coming for you. Um, I believe, oh boy, 111 kilowatts at 40%. Granted, we're not preconditioned. So don't, again, charging video coming with actual data, but uh, this this is not a good indication. And, and actually everything about the Cybertruck so far has not been a good indication for charging performance. But I wanted to warm up the battery, get it juiced up to at least 55, 60% for the performance driving before we do uh, everything else later on. Feels like we've been here a while. Typical charging stop for us, 10 minutes. Yep. Plus or minus. Let's see how much we got. Let's see how much we got. Only, we've only gained 13%. We're up to 52 and uh, 104 kilowatts at 52%. Now granted the battery's not preconditioned, but we were ripping on it, we were driving it. Uh, again, I really, I don't want to be that guy. We're going to do a full charging test. Don't judge anything you see in this clip. But initial impression is at very low, the Cyber, Cybertruck charge is great. 250 kilowatts to 25%. That's that's livable. Sure, sure. Yeah. But it just seems to die up top. So more testing to do, more testing to do. Let's focus on the driving. Let's, uh, let's jump in. I think we, I'm kind of tired of waiting around. <laughs> let's go send it and uh, head off to the canyons. Well, you join us approaching some great canyon roads. So, Drew, if you wouldn't mind getting us set up into what you think would be a good setting. So, I think we should go, we're already in uh, standard power, so most power, uh, and then you have two choices for ride and handling, relaxed or focused. I think focused would be better here. We are focused. And uh, reducing the ride height from higher to lower. So that should uh, help that the, should the help. corners. We are at 48% state of charge, which is, uh, I would say, enough to output full power because, again, same battery used in the tri-motor. Mm -hmm. And so that might have some discharge issues. And um, uh, what do you say we do a little rippage? There's no, like, traction control off unless you go off-road, but then your suspension's high. Do you have um, slip start? Nope, no slip start. Oh, okay. So let's uh, let's launch it. What do you say? Let's do it. Okay, Francie, you ready to hold on back there? Because <laughs> yes. it's not just going to be launched. We got corners. Let's go. Traction the yep. whole way. Yep. Full power at about 40 miles an hour. Yep. Stay strong deep into it. I'm just going to get used to the steering and the weight of the thing. So we noticed driving up here that on center the steering is quite sharp, but look how much effort I have to put into the steering at speed. It's a little bit odd because uh, when we made that quick turn onto the highway, I'm not sure what I'm feeling if it's the ratio or if it's the tire that's deforming, or if it's that the motors don't have enough force to turn the wheels. And so that's why testing's needed because here I am coming into a tight corner. Definitely has enough force to turn the wheels. Yeah, yeah. hopefully that's not yeah. the problem. So we, I think we feel good about that, but there is this disconnectedness mid corner. So we're right on the edge of that tire, yep. right? Full send, that's wide open. Yeah. Doesn't give you full power until you're straight. Pretty straight, yeah. Coming in under braking. Good brake pedal feel. <laughs> you know, you're just riding the edge of this tire the whole time. And that's where you're right, you have to put in so much steering. Yeah. And there's a dead zone that just feels not confidence inspiring in this situation. Now this can all be tuned and it feels great on center, but it's when you like lean into it, mm -hmm. you go like, oh, I want this much, but I have to go this much. And my brain as a driver goes, is that the edge of the tire? Sure, right. <laughs> It right. feels it's, like I'm driving with low tire pressure. Yeah, and if you are you keep cranking on more wheel and you don't get the steering that you want, then that means you should lift, you should slow down. Braking test, 70 miles an hour, ready? Okay. 68, 69, 70. Whoa. Damn, when the thing grabbed, <laughs> yeah. it just that anchors That's pretty on. good, that's pretty good. Uh, I did that last night in the rain and we just like, <laughs> felt like we accelerated. <laughs> <It's> going, <yeah. laughs> so great brakes, really good brake pedal feel. It's nice. Not, 
Porsche fur, but uh, it feels honestly better than Model S and X. Yep. So I think the braking situation here is, is even better than those cars, which is nice. Yeah, it's significantly bigger. Coming into some corners. A little tire spin, actually. Yeah. So I'm matted. Yeah, maybe a little bit of power limit. Yeah, Could it seems be... like it just, yeah, that has that arbitrary steering, uh, you know, limit. Yeah, you're the, not dead center. the uh, BMW electric car thing, where unless you're straight, it doesn't give you full power. But it's got plenty of power. I just, this is where the Cyber Beast is going to be a freaking shredder. For sure. Yep. Can't wait for that one. That's but amazing cool. still how, how composed this is, you know, again, for a pickup truck. So I totally agree. Here's the thing. We're in a, in a pickup truck, which I would never drive a traditional pickup truck this quickly <laughs> sure. and have this much confidence going into corners. Absolutely. The brake pedal's right there. Even though the steering's odd, the balance of the truck very neutral. Safety. So neutral, not oversteering, not too understeering. It is understeering, but not to the point where it's not fun to drive. Yep. And um, the only thing I want is just to back off the stability control stuff, which you can do in the dirt, thankfully. Yep. And we'll play around with that hopefully when we go to the off-road section. But if you live on a back road, and I don't think people are going to be doing track days and cyber trucks, and I know someone will, of course, because it's YouTube. You got to do everything. <laughs> but uh, you know, if you're just going to hustle down a back road, kind of like we are now. Just putting some speed on, using the hills. I feel like this is how a normal person who lives on a road like this would just kind of be, oh, got to get home pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, wow. They're going to have a great time. It feels so much more agile and nimble uh, than it actually, uh, you would think a 6,600 pound truck would be. Yeah, for sure. And yep. it's it's hilarious because it's, I mean, the Rivian handles pretty well. I feel like this is way more composed though. I agree. Yeah, it, in the Rivian's sportiest setting, um, I think I think we've got a pretty close match mm -hmm. uh, between the two. We should um, do that. But Track day. Eh, yeah. And now I find myself putting in a, even a little bit more steering right. just to front load the turn. But even there, loading it up a little bit. Now, granted, we're still on public roads. We're not going crazy or fast or anything. And uh, it's, it's very easy to place the Cybertruck. It's easy to predict where we're going to be and we got some cute cows up here. We love cows. Wouldn't be an out of spec video without some cows. Those Texas cows, look at those horns. Yeah, I know, it's serious. Let's just huck it to the right. <laughs> I'm matted the whole time. Yeah, yeah. You can feel it actually does want to rotate, but it is totally being stopped by the ESP. Yeah, so as soon as we can get ESP backed off, Sexy Buttons needs to make an off button for this thing. Yes, please. Enhance auto, get yourself a cyber truck, and you gotta, <laughs> gotta find a way to get traction control off so we can drift a 6,600 pound <laughs> <laughs> Tesla cyber truck. That's practical uh, consumer advice right there. We, that's what Adespec is for. <laughs> the three people who care about driving quickly <laughs> in electric vehicles. Uh, dude, much, what? Uh. Forward collision Whoa. warning? Talk about early. Okay, hold on. Let's go full lock. <laughs> Whoa! So it does just go full steering. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Wow, that and was really that was really just that was just tires sliding. Yeah, that was just a little bit of a scrub situation. Really quite fascinating, actually. That's, that's and that incredible. happened fast. That felt faster than it could do in a parking lot. That was very fast. Wow. So yeah, maybe you it's you really can't get it to be uh, too far behind your steering it, but even with that quick of an emotion. Oh, got some got stuff some rolling. rolling around, rolling back there. Sorry to the viewers for the noise. Francie's on it, maybe. You just lift off the throttle a little bit, nose tucks in. Uh -huh. It's balanced, but I do not like it from the steering perspective. Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, and that's, that's kind of, you know, to be expected. Right, so for everything so far, except for charging and maybe performance driving, I, I, I feel like um, if this was a performance vehicle, the steering system lets it down. Sure. Because at low speed, I can understand how it could be fun to chuck it around. And perhaps the Cyber Beast is better tuned for this stuff as the performance version. Uh, but at least here in the dual motor, as we come down into some of these cool divots, like here we are just going to come under braking, load it up. <laughs> yeah, it wants to just yeah. hop around. Yeah. No, does, chassis does feel nicely balanced. Yeah, I got to let it free. And it feels really stiff like uh -huh. the chassis. There's no yeah. flex. Yeah. It just... Yeah. <laughs> Tesla engineers, yeah. you can tell they did all of their tuning and engineering with ESP off. And sure. then they just slapped the, the ESP oh, on top right. of it. Oh, right. got to keep it safe. Yeah, yeah. got it. But, but like, as soon as someone figures out how to turn this crap off, 
oh man, this thing's oh, going to be, be it's going to be epic. So I think that really sums up the Cybertruck driving review, uh, you know, without towing and without off-road, which we'll get into, but it's, uh, it is a cool vehicle. There is, it's one of those things that the first five or 10 minutes is a like eye-opening, crazy experience to something that you've never felt before. Mm -hmm. It's a vehicle that is so unusual. Actually, I'll go and just pull right up here. This is where we're heading to. There's two Cybertrucks and a Rivian over there. How sick is that? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's so unusual at low speed, but it's better. There is no question this for this type of application. You know, we're not talking GT3 RS no. or anything. This is the correct steering approach to building a truck. And then you talk about the chassis, which feels amazingly stiff and well built and well screwed together from the structure of the vehicle. The suspension, which has a huge range of adjustment in terms of height and comfort, that really is some something very unusual that most Cybertruck buyers probably haven't owned a Rivian or owned a vehicle that can do something like that. Sure. And uh, on a back road, it's competent, it's fast, it's capable, but it's slightly awkward from a steering perspective. Yeah, I think I think that's that uh, is just going to be a compromise. That's the nature of of that decision that they made to do such a radical change with four wheel drive by wire uh, steering system. That's that's you know never been done before, or at least on a production vehicle. So those yeah. are my thoughts. Wish it was a bit quieter mm -hmm. uh, from a road noise perspective. Mm -hmm. We need to see what's going on with the vibration. Again, we got five of these things this week we'll right. be in, so we'll play around with that. And uh, for those who are asking, the truck is asking for a software update, but it is not uh, for anything related to the software. It's just the navigation data. Mm -hmm. So the truck is up to date at the time of this recording. And uh, Drew, uh, we're going to meet some guys, but on the way back, you drive it and uh, let's see what you think. Sounds good. Yeah, so here's the tread blocks on this, a fairly new truck. You can see a pretty, pretty limited tread, probably for handling, of course, and, and range like we were just discussing. And we actually also have a Rivian R1T over here that has some real chunky lugs on it. And even this isn't like a hardcore, uh, you know, it is a pretty good all-terrain tire, but electric adapted. But even then, this just has so much more meat on the tire than the Cybertruck does. You guys I join am. me in uh, Rivian R1T, and we're just using it as a quick comparison vehicle between this and the Cybertruck because uh, there was one here we were. Thanks to my friend over here, Adam, for letting us drive this thing. Dude, you're epic. Uh, super Thank helpful. You. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and what we're going to do is essentially, is this tailgate down or you got something attached to the back? Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. That's your front license plate. Never mind. Nope. Oh, that's the front, front view. view. I don't know what I was <laughs> thinking. Where we go? <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, because we've just been ripping the Cybertruck, I figured let's, we've been talking about this. Spark the phone, 20 inch, uh, all terrain, EV yep. spec tires. The nice thing is you can go full stability control off in the Rivian, which you have to hold for off. We're gonna go ride feel stiff, but I leave the suspension not in lowest. I go up just so it can work a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just from owning the truck, this is how I prefer to have it set up. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one thing we should mention is we got in here and we all were just like, this is so nice. It is. Yeah. It really is. The fit and finish and just the material. Mm -hmm. The details. Oh, it sucks that it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> because like the seats, I mean, I actually prefer the Cybertruck seats, but there's something that Rivian has captured that gives it this adventurous vibe, but very high quality without being pretentious. And I think it's just getting out of the Cybertruck into this. I'm in, personally, I prefer this. Um, I also love the Cybertruck, but this is just, it's, it feels like a sigh of relief, <laughs> even though I love the Cybertruck. So anyway, uh, we're in the Rivian R1T quad motor, large battery pack. So this is the you know, really cyber beast competitor, if you will. Not really a fair comparison to the dual motor that we were in. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The steering. Yeah. It's so funny. Back to normal. You really have to, I got, I guess I'm calibrated to that Cybertruck. That was a weird feeling that I was just like, <laughs> kept going over. So, but at least underway, it should feel pretty normal. So yeah, yeah we're on the all-terrain tires as well on this one. And I think what we should do just to try and make it a little bit of a fair, or at least a quick comparison. Let's not spend too much time on this, but let's just launch this really quick sure. and see how it does. So the best way to get the fastest launch in a Rivian is to go lowest suspension, which the uh, 
suspension is down now. Rivian through software updates has made it move a little bit faster, but it's still not as fast as the Cybertruck. Left foot hard on brake, floor it with the right. Y'all ready? Mm-hmm. Whoa! Oh my gosh. Woo! Boogies. That was good. Yeah, but so again, <laughs> Cyber Beast competitor. This is not right, fair. Right, 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 right. Not ample sale. It's, it's, but we don't have a Cyber Beast to test. But of course, you know, just, just coming in in the Rivian, great power. The brake pedal in this thing feels good as well, handling wise in this truck. You know, I've driven my truck a bunch and it is just coming into these corners. Yes. <laughs> yeah, baby. That's what we want. That's what we want to see is just full control over the vehicle and, you know, powertrain, let it slip, ESP's out of the way. The steering feels great, it's predictable. I can lean it right up on the tires and hell yeah it's really nice <laughs> <laughs> so tesla benchmark one of these for some software updates it's dinging at me because i'm hitting the line i guess but i'm trying to use all the road because uh adam paid his road tax this year so we're trying to maximize <laughs> <laughs> the amount of surface that we're uh, we're touching so coming in hard leaning on the brake pedal feeling nice get the steering in truck coming our way nothing to see here <laughs> it's all good he was ripping too, actually. It just is so, so nice to balance the Rivian right on the edge. Yeah. It's just it. It is. So, Tesla, you have some work to do now, for the tri motor. Cyber Beast can't wait. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But this is stupid. This whole cranking the steering wheel thing over. Yeah, it could be a little quicker. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Drew, time for you to rip the Cybertruck. Sounds good. You join Drew. <laughs> you join me the behind the wheel of the Cybertruck. Dual motor. For the first time. For the second time. Second ish time. Yep. But first time with some. I've been saying. This, real roads. I've been saying this particular one a lot. I don't know why. This particular one? This particular one. one. But I meant, I mean to say this truck, the, as in the Cybertruck. Oh, yes. Not this particular one. Because you're always only driving the particular one yeah. right. that you're driving, right? Yeah. And uh, do you have it in sporty mode or? Uh, that is a good question if we're in the same. So yes, yes, and yes. I said it remembers. Sweet. Man, it rips. It sounds good too. So yeah, I mean, obviously, okay. So we just got out of the R1T quad motor with 800 horsepower that um, it has more power, right? So it's faster. Yeah, and Cyber Beast will be faster than that. Yep. So, uh, not really apples to apples comparison, but I'm just very curious about the, especially the steering. As you start going a little quicker, Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> that was a little bit of what you were talking about where it's like, okay, is it, is it tire slip or is it, is it steering? And it, and the steering is a big part of the weirdness. Yeah. Ooh. I don't know. <laughs> and not confidence inspiring. Try the brakes. Speed. <laughs> yeah. That's, Feels that's, <laughs> that's typical Tesla where yeah. you really got to just get them into the ABS. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's where your tire toast totally gives up. <laughs> but at least the steer by wire has enough to just crank that thing over. Yep, oh yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, the, uh, the front wheels are turning uh, as much yeah, as- Just go full lock. <laughs> oh wow! The, the disappointing sound of understeer. Yeah, no, but totally. at least it can do it. It can, and uh, yeah, I mean, just like how it feels at low speed, where you know, at first you're like, "Wow, it's just really a lot snappier than you you expect." You know, it takes some getting used to when you're when you're driving like that too. Um, but there's just no feel. You just don't. Yeah, you don't have any feel through the steering, so. it's You do have feel at low speed. It like force feedbacks you in. Sure. But when you start loading it up, the feel goes away completely. Right. Air yeah. compressor's running for the suspension. 
<laughs> is it working uh, when you're when you're moving? We're going right, right? Um, right, yeah, right. left. Left. Oh. Um, so if we can rip it out on the street. This guy go a little bit. So you got a lot of lock on the wheel. A lot of lock, which is right. So That's I'm what like, someone would do at a stop sign. Yeah, and this is what feels natural, you know, with my baseline being a Model 3. And that's way too much. Way too much. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of regen. Yeah, good good regen. Yeah, oh we, we could... Uh, <laughs> nice. He's boogieing. Yeah, he is. <laughs> yes. Oh, he's got a Ducati on the back. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah. so an enthusiast. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we could help Tesla with their, their performance drive uh, tuning uh, just a little bit. And we already caught up to this Ranger. It's faster than any Cybertruck owner will ever need to go. Yeah, I really don't think the Cyber Beast... Um, is, is necessary the, the amount of power anyway um, it's just the handling dynamics if you can if you can get you know if they give you basically a track mode with with uh, cyber beast then that would be a lot of fun <laughs> so the, the disappointing thing is we don't have anyone at Tesla we can ask these things but mm -hmm. reading between the lines watching Jason Camisa's video yep. he had ESP on the entire time sure he said he put it in off-road mode to disable some ESP sure which is the same thing we have to do in this right so I'm right. thinking at least at the now without any software changes this is the same this is the same yeah motors sound great <laughs> Oh, I've been here before. <laughs> oh wow, yeah. yeah. It's like you get you get used to how how quick it is, and then you have those situations where you're you go whoa, like you really need to put quite a bit more. And that in. makes me that huh. was I was feeling the same thing, and I was like, is that my tire? No, at the edge no. of grip, and the answer is no. It no. is just the steering giving up. But then is it that the motors don't have enough? forced to turn or is it just the ratio is changing around there which that is what's happening yeah and it's so weird yeah so that that could be that could be just tuned better hmm. and that's easy through software model y ripping yeah he was yeah yeah if you keep it at like you know eight tenths or so you don't really feel the uh the esp kick in and, and you can hustle this thing a Rivian, man. I don't know. Yeah, I should no, not we'll, have driven that. Yeah, and then you're just opposite lock everywhere in the Rivian. And you're like, oh, this is the way. Is there any uh, artificial noise? I don't think so. It's I'm hearing it all motor back here. Okay. Maybe it's just our uh, our additional vibration situation that I'm hearing. And the price difference between this and the Beast is like 20k. What is that? Yeah. Yeah. 20 grand. Okay. An extra motor that yeah. needs to come with different software. If they don't give right. it track pack or something. Yeah. Yeah. Not you don't need the power. Don't need the power. So yeah, but you gotta gotta let me have fun. Yeah, and I guess this particular one being the the Foundation uh, mm -hmm. series has a twenty thousand dollar premium on it mm -hmm. so it uh the sticker said what 101 yeah it's 101 yeah, yeah. Not here. what do you think francie you've been we've left you out not unintentionally but uh what is your impression it's fine i like to observe you know oh, that feels so good from a chassis perspective yeah yeah for sure and let's break the corner through so we don't die <laughs> well that's what we're supposed to do <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> yeah, you can just drop a tire. Take a wheel, yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm never a passenger in our video. Yeah, you don't really. We're not doing much, but... <laughs> yeah. I'm not a good passenger. <laughs> yeah. No, you're not. It's, uh, um, so, yes, continue. Yeah, well, um, let's see. What do I think? I think a lot of people were saying it doesn't drive like a truck and that we feel that for sure. Um, I don't know. I feel like the steer by wire is something that 
you experience, you know it's different right away, but I haven't heard anyone come to a conclusion immediately being like, this is amazing or this is horrible. What do y'all think? Like. I think you're dealing with rational people that don't come to very quick conclusions as Drew terms the wrong way. <laughs> um, pass this cup. Yeah. Nothing to see here, officer. Nothing to see here. Um, uh, is that even an officer? Oh, yeah. Just pretend to be an officer. Yeah. Um, In that case. You turn, baby. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not. Forget. You just keep it F1 all the time. Continue, Francie. Um, what else? Ask certain questions. Yeah, what is your opinion of the Cybertruck uh, driving in the city, highway, mm -hmm. and in the canyons? Which are the three mm -hmm. places we've evaluated it today. Maneuverable in the city. That was fine. We've taken it into tight places, spaces, and it works fine even through a drive through So, um, I think if you are considering having it in the city, you don't really need to worry. It looks funky amongst the rest of the normal things, but um, I think it works well there. Uh, on the highway, fine too. I think what really has stood out is that, yeah, the, the different input on the steering at different speeds, like you're saying, that ratio. Um, I think, yeah, we all feel like it's familiar. It's Tesla familiar, which is cool, I guess. Um, because it's a really seem to be intuitive systems once you get to know a few things here and there and yeah on those roads it's it makes me a little nervous <laughs> because it's so big so to take that around compared to the smaller like you know cars that you throw around canyons and feel just closer to the ground and everything um, but it does stick to the corners and everything and y'all are sending it and we haven't flown off the edge so uh, I think it's pretty cool. Um, I'm, I know that like Tesla enthusiasts are, and you know, employees and everyone, they're excited to get them and then they love them and they become attached to them. But I feel like, I don't know, if you're going to go for a truck, that's an EV. Um, I don't know if, if you would be drawn to the cyber truck unless you like are drawn to Tesla. Right? Which aren't most EV people who drawn to Tesla? Maybe. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I wonder if we can get any of that that info of uh, the demographics. Mm -hmm. um, Second, like their first time. Yeah, because because yeah, it certainly seems like uh, you yeah, know the the typical truck people mm -hmm. are going to be the last. To yeah. Die. I, Ford, I was reading that Ford said that everyone buying their, like, their Mach-E's and their Lightnings are, or a lot of them, it was like 50% or something, are new to Ford completely. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I wonder if it'll be repeat Tesla folks or new crazy novelty Cybertruck. But with the weight, I feel like that would be such a deterrence if you have to wait for two million reservations to click through. Yeah. Right. We'll, we'll see how many uh, actually turn into deliveries, but um, yeah, yeah. still, as of now, yeah, you're going to be waiting. Gonna if you be place waiting. an order today, you yeah. know, what is it, a couple of years? Yeah, then, right? So. And then how different will it be by then? Yeah, good good question. Yeah. Well, hopefully better. Right. It could, could, better. Only be, yeah, could only be better. better. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I think um, my, my impression is, is, is this is the most maneuverable truck in the city, electric, any, or any truck, regardless. It's so fun to drive around. It gets so much attention, and seemingly the online hate doesn't transfer to the real world. Oh. There is so much positivity. Just, just grins everywhere we yeah. go. It, that was the biggest surprise. Yeah. That like people. Not, I thought everyone was gonna hate it. We're gonna like have to like shield ourselves and like good thing it's bullet resistant. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but no, people freaking love this yeah. thing. Yeah. That's so that's cool. cool. The yeah. driving around the city is uber maneuverable. It seems fairly efficient. Um, mm -hmm. Tesla does drivetrain tuning pretty much better than anyone. Just the one pedal driving, the sound of the motors, the preciseness of how everything is done is, is mm -hmm. next level. I would say it's, it, it, well, I should say it matches their existing product line, which is what you would expect from a $100,000 electric truck from them. And that's one of the best parts about this truck. Mm -hmm. Rivians have this, you know, half shaft clunk and the dual motor. You hear the, the clutch connect and disconnect and mm -hmm. 
and this one is from a drivetrain perspective really solid except for um, the front half shaft maybe this one will have like half shaft issues like model x has uh, and we'll have that that'll just come over time we'll just have to wait we can't review the reliability in a three or four day test but um, the truck shines everywhere especially once it gets autopilot except for performance driving Which, that's where the rivian is just like damn so good yeah. and very hardcore the difference there is specifically uh, well the biggest difference is the rivian lets you turn off the safety systems and so in the Cybertruck, you can't even get close to understanding what this chassis is capable of. We still have no idea because we're reined in by all the safety stuff. And it, to me, feels like the truck is unbelievably stiff and really well sorted yeah. from a chassis perspective. We're just not able to explore all of the hard work by the chassis engineers because... It's just reined in. Yeah, yeah. someone doesn't let us turn off traction control. I don't get that. In a, a truck that's meant to have fun and do stupid and, stuff. And it's it's really um, it's really intrusive. You know, it's not even that you can you can get it, you know, like a I don't know, a, you know, BMW M dynamic mode or something like that. You know, you get like halfway and you're like, ah, oh, I see exactly what the car wants to do, but I can't spin. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just no fun. Yeah, it's like, oh, 0.6 G, shut right. it down. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, and, and I really actually think that the uh, on a back road, that's, that uh, steering needs tuning. Mm -hmm. It does. And, it does. and uh, that is really, yeah. um, that that's what I was ex not expecting to happen, but I thought, okay, let's get it loaded up. And a lot of it has to do with the ratio. The motors are impressive on the steering. Mm -hmm. uh, we went 30 miles an hour, just went, Understeer. <laughs> it's just. I would like to see that from the outside. <laughs> it looks, it looks yeah. hilarious. Oh my god! A slow mo to watch the tires deform. <laughs> yeah. That would be awesome. Okay, yeah. we got a lot of stuff that yeah. we have to do. Yeah. Right, maybe we'll wait until we get our Cybertruck to do all that like real abusive testing. But uh, you know that that's about how we drive on Canyon roads. We live in the mountains. That's mm -hmm. you know we we're always booking it, and this truck just doesn't feel great up there from a steering perspective. But the brakes held up better than Model S. Maybe not much better, but they felt better. But you drove it after me. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Same. Same impression. Mm -hmm. So arguably, a truck is for a certain. You know, maybe not performance driving, but the towing hauling part that we haven't had to do yet. But the Tesla part of it is that you should be able to have fun with it. That's what y'all are saying. You can rip it if you want. It, it, so what I what I when I use the word fun, I mean being able to actually slide it. <laughs> which is something that yeah. um, probably, you know, uh, again, you know, uh, us and a good couple dozen maybe uh, other Tesla owners like yeah. to do that sort of thing. So for everybody else, I'm not saying it's not fun. Um, it's incredibly fun mm -hmm. and has all those electric, you know, advantages of the, the immediate torque. And, and <laughs> you dude know. just lost his mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, got the cameras yeah. Um, So I know there's like a lot of people waiting, like wondering to see which parts of it will be really great and which parts of it will be a letdown and it's probably going to be like complex. Uh, and a lot of the things have to do with the truck parts of it that we haven't really the utility part of it that we haven't put to the test so but kyle like based on what you've gotten from driving it around in these different scenarios how do you feel from what you wanted it to be what you expected it to be uh, it's much more competent than i thought it would be i thought uh you know uh, at least in the city i didn't imagine it could be so maneuverable and just like go there and have instant power and the steering is great Honestly, for, for how everyone's going to be using this vehicle, it is the uh, it is so good. And, and to Drew's point, we, we're really pushing the extremes when we talk about fun and performance. And like someone like my dad or a normal Tesla buyer, they're never going to go to those extremes, and it's going to be really fun for them. And, and we haven't driven Cyber Beast for those people. You're just going to be driving uh, choosing Cyber Beast, right? And That's why uh, I'm for it. so yeah. Uh, because we're silly. We like to go fast and everything. Doesn't matter what it is. I mean, I've seen Drew wheel a U-Haul truck pretty fast. <laughs> so, Guilty. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> so we can't thank you enough for joining us for our first drive. Uh, I can say our first drive now of the Tesla Cybertruck uh, dual motor all wheel drive. I can't wait for the Cyber Beast. Our suggestions to Tesla pretty much come to, uh, you know, Focusing on the steering in a city and a highway environment made sense. Now it's time to dial in the performance aspects of the truck. Give us some ways to back off stability control where the suspension isn't jacked up. 
um, where we can actually drop it and back off stability control. Again, Rivian, the competition, is getting this so right. Um, even the Hummer EV lets you slam the suspension and put it in WTF mode and back the suspension off. So the, as a competitive analysis, this needs that. And um, I, I really am, uh, the more I drive this truck, the more I just want to listen to the sound system. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, that is a good, that's pretty good. Okay, thanks for watching. See you in another one again soon. Bye-bye.